Algerian football podcast. This is episode eight, the only Algerian football podcast in the world in English. Hope everyone listening is doing good and doing well. There's lots to talk about as ever on this show, and we're going to start with a bit of breaking news really that happened today. Riyad Mahrez, of course, was nom- nominated for the 2022 Ballon d'Or award, and many people were thinking, oh, Mahrez will probably get. 25th to 30th, he actually came 12th. We have the 12th best footballer in world football and I think that is a really great achievement and you think despite the fact that we didn't qualify for the World Cup, we had a disastrous Africa Cup of Nations campaign back in January but Mares still managing to pick up the 12th position place. He came above the likes of Bernardo Silva, Harry Kane. He came even above Cristiano Ronaldo. You know when Riyad Mahrez is finishing above Cristiano Ronaldo in the Ballon d'Or running, it's it's quite remarkable. If I told you that five, six, seven years ago that an Algerian would finish above Cristiano Ronaldo in the Ballon d'Or ranking, and Messi, of course, Messi's not even on the bloody uh, nomination list in the first place, I'm sure you'd be quite shocked as well. So, well done to Mahrez, of course. However, his club did suffer defeat at the weekend. I believe it's their first league loss of the season. Liverpool won Man City nil. Yes, Riyad Mahrez still very much in the running to win another Premier League title. Um, it'll be a fifth Premier League title. It'll be absolutely astonishing. Surely a Premier League great to win five of them. That's just insane. Now, I know people are saying City have lost and Arsenal are in it. For me... Arsenal are not going to win the league. And most Arsenal fans know that. And if I offered every Arsenal fan right now a place in the top four, they'd all take it. But of course, Mahrez didn't feature in the starting lineup, And of course, City lost. Question marks for me. Not the great... He did so well, Mahrez. He sort of came back to his form again. And then, of course, a bit of a disaster in the Champions League last week against Copenhagen, where he, of course, misses a penalty... And then Man City get a red card and then Mahrez is the man that's sacrificed and taken off. So a bit of a mixed bag, but of course there is midweek Premier League coming up very soon. Surely Red Mahrez will get a game very, very soon. I know Man City aren't playing in this week, but there's going to be a lot of fixtures coming thick and fast. And we hope to see Riyad involved in those. Elsewhere in the Premier League, my lot West Ham. 1-1 at Southampton. Said Ben Rahma with the assist again, not starting, still getting the assist. Scored a fantastic free kick in the UEFA Europa Conference League. Of course, West Ham are now through to the knockout stages of Europe for the second season in a row. Ben Rahma, what a free kick, fantastic against Anderlecht. They're no mugs either. Really good. I thought he'd start considering he scored, got an assist again. Um, and of course, West Ham now go to Liverpool away. And I'd like to see Ben Rahma start. At Anfield, and if he does start against Trent Alexander Arnold, Arnold on that left, really good opportunity. That's a player suffering, just come back from injury, low on confidence. If Ben Rahma can get at Trent, I think that'd be fantastic. So uh, that's the Premier League. In League, uh, we've got Andy Delore on the score sheet again. He's finding the goals thick and fast. Unfortunately, uh, Delore was substituted quite early on in that Nice game with an injury issue. We hope he's not going to be out for. A lengthy period of time. What about Nabil Bentaleb? Is this the best Algeria international career resurrection we've seen in a long, long time? Nabil Bentaleb with a fantastic goal, speaking of free kicks, really, really good goal from uh, Bentaleb. He is certainly going to be in Algeria squads in years to come. He's cemented his place not only with his club, but with his country as well, with his performances in the recent international break. Very, very good. And we'll give a word to Yusuf Belayli at his new club, uh, Ajaxio. Didn't start. Funnily enough, they missed a pen when he was on the bench. If Belayli was on the field, you do wonder if he would have taken it and scored it. Came on, did really well for Ajaxio on that right wing. Got the assist for the goal. They get a point now. Funnily enough, Brestois, Stad Brestois, are now bottom. Now, Brest and Ajaxio are literally going to be fighting at each other's necks to stay up. If Belayli scores a goal that relegates Brest... You can't tell me that's written in the stars. But anyway, there we go. Now, we're going to talk about a player I don't think we've spoken about on this channel before. This could be the future 
of Algerian football. A very, very exciting prospect, Fares Shaibi, 19 years of age, playing for Toulouse, but not doing much losing. He's been really, really good. A couple more assists at the weekend for Toulouse. Um, Goals and assists, in quite good supply this season for Shaibi at 19 years of age. Been at Toulouse a little while, finally broke into the first team. He's got an older brother, Ilyas Shaibi. He used to be at Monaco and then ended up playing for Mouladia. So you can see that Shaibi family are very close to Algeria in their heart, despite being born in France. I think Fares Shaibi is 100% certain, dead on to be an Algerian international. I don't think France are ever going to pick him. Really good talent, attacking player. You can play in the cam, you can play out wide. Bit of creativity. Remember this name, remember this podcast. Fares Shaibi is a name for years to come in the Algerian football scene. What a talent. If you don't know him, get to know him. 19, so mature, so good on the ball, knows where the goal is, and really, really good creative skills. And we do miss a bit of creative spark in our midfield at the moment. That's a player I'd love to see called up in the next international break, which is next month in November. And just like that, just a few weeks to go. Now, of course, we're hopefully going to be playing two games in Sha'Allah. The reason there's an international break in November is because there's a World Cup. So the week just before the World Cup, where everyone goes off to the tournament, apart from us, for God's sake, and traumatic uh, <laughs> memories of that Cameroon game, we're looking to play a couple of friendlies. Now, as of right now, it's looking like one game in France and one game in Algeria. The France game was going to be in Marseille. The actual Marseille stadium people, I think it's the Orange Velodrome, whatever it's called, they don't want Algeria to play there. They think we're going to cause trouble. So this game, looking to be moved to Le Havre in the north of France. That's in Le Havre, um, very close to the UK geographically. And that would be against Sweden again. Another team that haven't qualified for the World Cup. So Algeria, Sweden in Le Havre. And that would be followed by a game to open up the new Baraki Stadium in Algiers. Algeria potentially at home there to South Africa got to be an African team that isn't going to the World Cup. There's not many opponents to choose from because a lot of the big teams are at the World Cup. Um, so I'd say Algeria, Sweden in La Havre, followed by Algeria, South Africa in Baraki. That's my take on it as of right now in mid-November, in the week before the World Cup. So that's to look forward to in terms of Algeria playing. But on the whole, it's been an OK week. Some good performances from the Algerian internationals. Um, we look ahead to that international break and of course the sort of players Bramadi is going to pick. Are we finally going to see a Hossam Awar, a Rayan Aignori come into that side? You look at the French midfield now for the World Cup. They've got Pogba and Kante, that's their centre midfield, out of the tournament. Where does that leave France? Does Awar get his way back in? Bloody hope not. But we'll see how that one unfolds. So we're just going to finish off with the quiz question as ever. Asked you last week, um, when Algeria went 35 games unbeaten, who was the highest ranked side we played in that run and didn't lose to? Which of course was, many people are surprised by this, Mexico were in the top 10 of the FIFA rankings when Algeria almost beat them. I think it was a draw in the end, if I recall correctly. So that was actually a draw, but we did very well uh, against the Mexicans. We have gone up recently in the latest rankings. I think Algeria in the top 40 now, but we want to be much higher and deserve to be much higher than that. We're fifth in the African rankings. Shows that we should be at the World Cup due to the technicality on stats, but it is what it is. So that was last week's quiz question. This week's quiz question is going to make you think, who scored Algeria's first goal in 2022? Who scored Algeria's first goal in 2022? You'll find out the answer next week at the same time in the same place. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.